With a name like this, you can't deny that Metagalactic Llama's battle at the edge of time holds a claim to having one of the greatest names of all time when it comes to video games. And it's all squeezed into a mere 3.5k of RAM on a VIC-20 circa 1983. Your mission is to defend Outpost OP-37, also known as the Edge of Time, from an invasion of cyborg arachnid mutants. All that's stopping them is the metal armors genetically enhanced to run the outposts and save the day. Now stopping this invasion is going to take some serious coordination. Your llama can move horizontally across the playfield, wrap the ground either side as necessary. Hitting fire spits a blast which will deflect off both the edges of the screen as well as the force field on top. More importantly, being able to adjust the force field's vertical position. Mastery of this is paramount to stopping the arachnids. Points are earned for each arachnid you blast, and the closer they are to the ground, the more points you'll get. Also, if you so happen to take out the thread they're descending on first, you get additional points for that as well, based on how high up the arachnid was. Sound contradictory? For sure. Though, it does make for a handy crowd control tactic. On reaching the ground, the arachnids will pursue your llama, and clearing them out is where the aforementioned force field comes in very handy. Otherwise, you're going to be eating up your lives rather quickly. That's really all there is to metagalactic llamas. Clear out the arachnids, move on to the next stage, offering a higher quota, along with a slightly faster pace. Now that pacing does a great job of making you feel like you're not being overwhelmed. Truly a sign of some great design and balance. Unsurprisingly, with little RAM available, there really isn't much to the presentation. The title screen just gives you the copyright message and the option keys, alongside that flashy colourful border. As for the audio, it's filled with lots of bleeps and crashes, which is really just what you'd expect from the humble VIX abilities. It goes a long, long way to reinforcing the arcade feeling, which is what this game is truly aiming at. Next up, we've got the ZX Spectrum release, converted and published by Salamander Software a year later in 1984. Salamander were not strangers to Llamasoft's work, having converted several other games in the past. This one is a conversion which leaves a little something to be desired, starting with the front end menu which drags on and on, cycling through the credits and the high scores before you get to the options screen and can actually start the game. Alongside joystick support, which is thankfully auto-detected, you can also redefine the keys. There's also a two-player mode, letting players take it in turns to battle back the arachnid invasion. Once you've moved on to the action though, it's really where the game truly feels wrong to me. Firstly, there's the llama's speed, where it feels like your beast is scooting around a little too quickly for my liking, making it tough to line up those shots. The big concern though is with the collisions. Whether it's blasting the descending thread carrying an arachnid or taking one out directly, the collision detection feels like it's really missing the mark. This is most apparent with the threads where time is of the essence in order to score the most possible points. It doesn't end there though, as your llama can be killed off by an arachnid just wandering up close to it. On the Vic, you'll die when there's actual contact between your llama and one of the arachnids. And luckily, a bit of frantic forceful positioning can save the day in that scenario. But not here. Considering the general pacing, I feel it really changes up the feel of the game, and not for the better. When a game is about the frantic kind of zapping which Llamasoft is best known for, accurate collisions are seriously important for both the feel and fairness of your playing experience.
The final of the official conversions is that for the C64. Though published by Llamasoft, unsurprisingly, it's worth noting Jeff didn't do this port himself, leaving it in the hands of Aaron Litterman, who would later port some of the other releases onto the C16. The first thing with this C64 version is that you can kind of consider it the pro version, starting with the presentation, which brings across both the starting level selection and the two-player mode offered by the Spectrum version. Then, of course, we've got that 1984 vintage scroll text alongside the music as well. The feeling of pro mode, though, is really apparent once you start playing as the C64's extra resources are used to increase the number of arachnids you'll combat at once. This may sound like it'll ratchet up the difficulty unnecessarily, and whilst it certainly can be tougher when starting out, there's still a fair challenge on offer here, as you'll need to really use your force field skills to rack up those points. The controls are tight, and the graphics are clear. Most importantly though, like the Vic original, the collisions are spot on and these upgrades really make for a darn solid 1984 era 64 upgrade. Before wrapping up, I wanted to show off the unofficial Atari 8-bit conversion released in 2008. This one is interesting because of how it was brought over. Rather than be a rewrite, it was converted by taking the original VIC-20 code, wrapping it in Atari-specific bits and pieces, and essentially emulating the lower resolution display of the VIC. So, it's the VIC-20 version in all its chunky glory, but filtered through the larger colour palette and some really chunky pokey audio. Unsurprisingly, it's spot on, feeling exactly like its progenitor, and the extra colours and improved audio really improve that proto-arcade feel in many subtle ways. Metagalactic Llama's Battle at the Edge of Time is not the most in-depth game you're going to see me cover on this channel. What it aims for is fast-paced arcade action and delivers it incredibly well. This isn't a game that's going to keep you playing constantly for months on end, but rather it's one to come back to every so often when you're in the feeling to try and beat your previous high score. From the three original versions, it's really a toss-up between the VIC-20 original or C64 for me. The VIC-20 version has a gentler difficulty curve thanks to the limitations on what it can display at once. Alternatively though, the C64 version offers a great upgrade as a pro edition. The challenges brought upon by having more arachnids on screen truly mixes the experience up. Regardless of which Commodore version you check out, you certainly will not go wrong as for the Spectrum version, well, it really suffers from that collision detection. While that and the extra presentation screens, which honestly break up the flow a little too much for my liking. And when it comes to a game like this where flow is paramount, it just makes it not work as well. Finally, if you do happen to have access to an Atari 8-bit machine, the version there makes for a more than worthy substitute. The mechanics and controls are spot on with the Vic original, and the tweaks made to the colour palette and audio are nice bonuses to boot. It is certainly a great way to experience it if you do not happen to have access to a humble Vic 20. And with that, I will catch you on the next video.